The Vatican, by which we mean the governing body of the Catholic Church consisting of the Pope and the Roman Curia, rather than the mixtape by the hip-hop group Natus, has more power and influence than many people feel comfortable with. Founded way back in the first century, when an organization is that old, there's no denying that they might have some truly troubling secrets under their very tall hats. These are dark secrets the Vatican doesn't want you to know. Number 15. The Vatican Army of Exorcists. Know someone behaving a little abnormal, saying things that don't make an ounce of sense? They could be possessed. Well, as luck would have it, there are several Catholic priests who claim to have a special set of skills that might come in handy. These aren't normal priests, however. They are a select group, legally recognized by the Vatican, who perform exorcisms. Once considered a ritual common only in the Middle Ages or horror movies, exorcism made a comeback in the early 90s with the establishment of the International Association of Exorcists. Made up of priests spread throughout 51 countries, the association boasts approximately 400 trained exorcists in Italy alone. Their requests for assistance number in the hundreds of thousands each year. In fact, so popular is the ritual that the late Father Gabriel, a former exorcist of the Vatican, claimed to have performed 130,000 in his lifetime. Methods, too, have evolved throughout the ages, with 89-year-old Cardinal Ernest Simoni saying he performed up to five exorcisms by phone every single day from his native Albania in 2018. And Bob Larson, the proprietor of the International School of Exorcism, confirming he offered his services via Skype. Before we go on, we have a cool challenge for y'all. It'll take about five seconds to complete. Uh, let's make a deal. Just leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell, and you will get 10 years of amazing luck and fortune. Try it, it actually works. Now it's time for the odd topic. While we don't have the time to go trawling through the depths of the deep web for ourselves, you know, these videos don't edit themselves, you know, lots of loyal subscribers with the time to do so are always getting in contact with us to show us videos or photos that they have found that they feel we should use our channel to bring wider attention to. This right here is one such image, and the story behind it is intriguing to say the least. The original was uploaded by a man by the name of Vittoria Salvio, who claims that this photo was taken within a chamber inside a secret room in the depths of Vatican City. Apparently, he was there doing construction work and stumbled upon the secret room when trying to find the restroom. He couldn't believe the gruesome sight that lay before him. We always take fan-submitted photos with a pinch of salt, but if this one is true, we can't quite believe what we're seeing either. Just what is that skull, and why is the Catholic Church clung on to it? Haunting, to say the least. Comment down below with the hashtag oddtopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 14. Vatican Bank Scandals Notorious for its dodgy connections, the Vatican Bank is an institute that has been riddled with scandals since its founding in 1942. Making Business Insider's Top 5 list, the Catholic Church's primary financial institution was established during World War II to avoid the restrictions placed on financial transactions by the Allies. Exempt from such restrictions, the Vatican Bank soon became known as the world's best offshore bank and was soon linked to organized crime. With members members of the Mafia keen to escape the scrutiny of world banks, the Vatican Bank was used to launder $900 million in counterfeit bonds and securities in the 1970s. In 1974, Archbishop Marcinkus, a former chief of papal security and head of the Vatican Bank, was reported as being responsible for the collapse of the business empire of Michel Sindona, a Sicilian financier, when he lost 
30 million dollars of their money. However, that was only the start of the Vatican Mafia scandals, with the collapse of Banco Ambrosiano the most famous. The largest privately owned banking group lost 1.4 billion dollars in unsecured loans to the Vatican Bank, who paid a settlement of a whopping 244 million to Ambrosiano, but never admitted any wrongdoing. In 2009, an Italian journalist published a book about the bank's questionable history, which included fake charity accounts, money laundering, and embezzlement. Obviously, bad publicity didn't put a halt to proceedings, with four priests investigated for operating bank accounts for the Mafia in 2012, and a priest arrested in 2013 for using the bank to smuggle millions of euros for the mob. It seems the Vatican would rather deal with legal consequences than those of the Mafia. Number 13. Smuggling Nazis to Safety It comes as little surprise that following Allied victories in Germany at the end of World War II, the Nazis suddenly found Europe an inhospitable place to reside. Following this revelation, they began to seek refuge elsewhere with the help of both the Vatican and Red Cross. Now, this fact is surprising. However, it appears it may have been due to a genuine misunderstanding on behalf of the Red Cross, rather than unprecedented generosity. Thousands of internal documents in the archives of the International Committee of the Red Cross ICRC, leaked to Harvard University research fellow Gerald Steinecker throw light on how and why mass murderers such as Adolf Eichmann, Joseph Mengele, and Klaus Barbie were able to evade capture. Amid the post-war chaos, the Red Cross relied heavily on both Vatican references and allied military checks in issuing travel papers, or 10-100s as they were known. Steinecker says the documents indicate that the Red Cross issued at least 120,000 of the 10-100s and that 90% of ex-Nazis fled Europe via Italy. Whatever the reason, the Vatican Refugee Commission provided Nazi fugitives with false identities and they have consistently refused to comment or release the relevant documentation from their secret archives. Pope Francis has promised to do so in 2020, so we don't have long to wait. Number 12. Rwandan Genocide a simple apology by the Pope in 2017 hardly seems enough for the significant death toll members of the Catholic Church are said to be partially responsible for in Rwanda back in 1994. Priests, clergymen, and nuns were believed to have hindered rather than helped members of the Tutsi ethnic group who were fleeing from the Interhamwe and local militias between April and July 1994. According to survivors and members of the Rwandan government, many of the victims died in the church where they had sought refuge. Although several brave priests and nuns hid people in churches, rectories, and convents, there were others who, for reasons that are beyond comprehension, participated fully in the genocide. The Father Serembo, for example, ordered bulldozers to push down the walls of his parish, killing 2,000 people inside. And sisters Gertrude and Maria led the inter to their convent and garage, where women and children were hiding. Both Father Serembo and the sisters were prosecuted. However, many other priests and nuns escaped unscathed and are no doubt still practicing today. Number 11. Terrible Popes you would be forgiven for thinking someone appointed as Pope would have good morals and some semblance of sanity, wouldn't you? Well, it appears that these two attributes, and many others, were missing from several Roman Catholic Popes selected over the 2,000 years since the Church was established. In that time, 266 men have held the prestigious role of Pope. However, many deserve honorable mention for all the wrong reasons. John Twelfth reigned from 955 to 964, a hellish nine years by all accounts. Not only was he said to be deceitful, cruel, and foolish, John XII was also a murderer, gambler, and adulterer, and considered the worst pope of all time. Unquestionably the most famous, however, was Alexander VI, who made the cover of E.R. Chamberlain's The Bad Popes. Born Rodrigo Borgia, he ruled between 1492 and 1503. His family was one of the most powerful in Rome during the Renaissance. 
Well known for their criminal exploits, the Borgia family's life was brought to the big screen with the made-for-TV drama running over two seasons. His family connections clearly rubbed off on him, as Alexander VI was considered so power-hungry and evil that he was immortalized in Assassin's Creed II. He was accused of murdering his political enemies, nepotism, and is said to have had numerous affairs that resulted in children. Pope Stephen VI ruled for just a year year from 896 to 897, before being put to death following bizarre behavior that included interfering with a corpse. His hatred of his predecessor Formosus was such that he dug up his body and put it on trial. Pope Stephen screamed at the corpse, finding it guilty of being an illegitimate pope. He then proceeded to chop off its skeletal fingers, bury it in an unmarked grave, and then dug it up again, throwing it in the Tiber River. The population of Rome weren't impressed with this behavior, and Stephen VI was put to death. Formosus was reburied with full honor, and a new ruling was made that prohibited dead bodies being put on trial. Number 10. The Woman Pope Legend has it that there was once a medieval woman who disguised herself as a man to secure the top job as head of the Roman Catholic Church. Pope Joan, or Pope John VIII as was their official title, was elected following the death of Leo IV. The title was handed out as Pope John VIII had gained great respect as a teacher and scholar in Athens. However, rumor has it, Joan had traveled from Athens and, through an escalating series of dares, found herself elected as the the Pope in Rome. The story takes a slightly bizarre turn from here as she was caught out. Having fallen pregnant, she gave birth in the middle of the road, with witnesses tying her to a horse dragging her for miles to her death. Historians labeled the story as nothing more than a myth invented by early critics of the Catholic Church, and it's hard to argue with their logic. Number 9. Sexual Abuse Cases Sexual abuse scandals have rocked the Catholic Church throughout the world, with thousands of stories of predatory priests disgracing the faith for many years. The first reports came to light in the mid-1980s in the United States. However, the most notorious cases in Ireland and Austria didn't emerge until the mid-1990s, with the case of disgraced priest Brendan Smith contributing to the fall of the Irish government in 1994. With no policy in effect to protect children or even require a reporting of such crimes to the police, the Vatican City State's church leaders have been apologizing for the sins and crimes of their forefathers for decades. Forefathers and contemporaries, I'd say. In the US, determined reporting by the Boston Globe newspaper exposed the behavior of pedophilic priests to the world and prompted victims to come forward right throughout the globe. Several settlements were made by US dioceses to victims between 2000 and 2010, and in 2019, Pope Francis promised all abusers would be brought to justice. Number 8. Crime Capital of the World Vatican City has been labeled the crime capital of the world, with the crime rate a staggering 1.5 crimes per citizen. Spanning just 110 acres, the smallest country in the world is home to just 1,000 residents. In 2006, less than half that number of residents called the city home, and a total of 341 civil and 486 criminal cases were heard. But it isn't the residents giving the city a bad name, it's the visitors. Huge crowds of tourists flock to the city each year, making it a pickpocket's paradise. The situation is further complicated by the fact that there's no working prison in the city and just one judge. Criminals are simply thrown out of the city, effectively marched across the border into Italy as part of a pact between the two countries. Number 7. Is drinking a sin? If drinking were a sin, there would be a significant number of repentant partakers at the church confessional each week. 
Thankfully, it isn't, a fact that is no doubt met with relief from the residents of the Vatican City, who are said to consume more wine per capita than any other country in the world. As is the case with the crime rate, the per capita nature of the statistics does skew perceptions. However, The Independent reports that the average resident of the Vatican consumes 74 liters of wine per year. To put this figure into perspective, residents of the Vatican consume double that of the average resident of Italy and France, triple that of the average citizen of UK, and six times as much as the average American. Several demographic anomalies are said to be responsible for the figures, with the average Vaticano being an older, upper-class, and well-educated male. Residents are also more likely to eat in large groups, further contributing to a larger wine consumption. And of course, the frequent consumption of sacramental wine at communion doesn't help. Number 6. Pope Benedict XVI a Nazi? Born Joseph Ratzinger, Pope Benedict XVI was drafted into the German Anti-Aircraft Corps in 1943, whilst still in the seminary. The little-known fact that he once formed part of the Hitler Youth led some to question his character just prior to his election to the papacy in 2005, three days after his 78th birthday. As an Air Force child soldier, he completed training in Munich and worked in a BMW aircraft engine factory in Trostburg. Photographs show him in a paramilitary uniform in a factory populated by hundreds of slave laborers in striped concentration camp uniforms. Ratzinger is said to have deserted in 1945 and was sent to a prisoner of war camp for several months before being released and returning to the seminary. Prior to being elected as Pope Benedict XVI, he passed an investigation by the Weissenthal Center clearing him of any accusation of anti-Semitism. Number 5. The Duplessis Orphans In the 1930s and 1940s, a conservative revolution led by Premier Maurice Duplessis ushered in an era in Quebec now known as the Great Darkness. Duplessis, with the support of the Catholic Church, rose to power throughout a period that was characterized by unprecedented corruption and repression. To help repay the favor, he created a bizarre money-making scheme that involved systematically diagnosing orphan children with mental illnesses they didn't have. The reason? Monetary gain. Subsidies for orphans amounted to just $1.25 a day, but mental patients were worth $2.75 per day instead. The situation for these children was dire, with many enduring unnecessary lobotomies, shock treatment, straitjackets, and abuse. Around 20,000 children were wrongly diagnosed, with many later bringing attention to their story and demanding compensation. The the Duplessis orphans, as they called themselves, pressured the Canadian government for justice and were eventually granted a monetary settlement from the Quebec government. The Catholic Church is yet to apologize for its role in the scandal. Number 4. Guidelines for Priests who father children. Until the 12th century, when representatives of several different Christian churches decided to change the rules, Catholic priests could marry. In addition to the ban imposed on marriage, priests were also expected to take a vow of celibacy, a vow that has been called into question throughout the years. One question that has arisen is, what happens if a priest fathers a child? In 2017, Ireland's Catholic Church published groundbreaking guidelines for priests, publicly admitting for the first time that priests do father children, despite the expectation they remain celibate. In 2019, CBS News interviewed Vincent Doyle, the founder of a support group for children of priests. His support group website, Coping International, is aimed at helping children of priests and currently has 50,000 users in 175 countries. Number 3. The Vatican's Secret Court The Apostolic Penitentiary is a tribunal that hears cases regarding sins and was established by Pope Alexander III in 1179. 
Shrouded in secrecy until 2009, the tribunal hears cases so grievous that only the Pope can grant absolution for them. Priests and bishops are able to deal with confessions of genocide. However, the secret court is utilized for sins considered bigger than that, such as an attempt on the Pope's life, a priest breaking the privacy expected of a confessional, or worse still, spitting out a communion wafer. Yes, defiling the Eucharist is worse than genocide. The Pope and the tribunal's head, the major penitentiary, decide on the punishment. The meetings are held in private as they are considered a matter of conscience and not for public debate. Number 2. Vatican Secret Archive 53 miles of shelves containing 12 centuries worth of documents, named the Vatican Secret Archives, are certain to evoke all sorts of questions. And it's little wonder, given that they are only available to a select few to peruse further heightening suspicion at what they may contain. With claims the archives contain evidence of extraterrestrial life, proof Jesus didn't exist, and many more juicy secrets of the Roman Catholic Church, the archives have been handed down from Pope to Pope since 463 AD. Although they are called secret, they are anything but in the fact that, well, they are known to exist. They aren't available for public viewing. However, scholars who pass a rigorous vetting process can view them, and since 2010, journalists have also been allowed to see their contents. Documents within the archive also only become available for viewing to the limited audience after 75 years, with the Vatican claiming it's too difficult to process the enormous bulk of documents any faster. This means that any documents pertaining to Pope Pius XII's actions during the Holocaust or the Church's numerous abuse scandals are still restricted from view. How convenient. The archives were renamed the Vatican Apostolic Archives in 2019. Number 1. Retiring Popes Imagine having to work until you die. As part of the Catholic dogma, most popes don't simply retire from the role. The job is only handed over to their successor upon their death. Of the 123 popes elected over the last 1,000 years, just five have resigned from the role. The first was Benedict IX. One of the youngest popes, he was assigned the role in his early 20s and is the only person who served multiple terms. Forced out of the papacy in 1036, he returned several months later, but then decided he wanted to marry. The role was handed to his successor, Pope Gregory VI, in May 1045. However, Benedict soon discovered the woman he held a candle for didn't feel the same. He reclaimed the title of pope again in November 1047, lasting just a year before he was removed. The second pope to resign was the man who had temporarily replaced Benedict. Pope Gregory VI stepped down after a year at the urging of the bishops. Pope Celestine V resigned in 1294 after just five months in the role. His successor had him jailed for fear he would try to reclaim the papacy, and Celestine died ten months later. In 1415, there were two popes in the Catholic Church, one in Rome and one in Avignon. Pope Gregory XII chose to step down in 1415 so the Pope in Avignon could be removed and the Catholic Church could change the ruling. Pope Benedict XVI was the final pope to resign. He did so in 2013, citing health reasons. However, some believe he was forced out following leaked information that he was an ineffectual manager and was struggling with the need for transparency with the public. When it comes to religion, there aren't many who don't hold an opinion of sorts. Positive or negative, believer or not, Religion has been the cause of many arguments throughout the years, some more serious than others, and none more so than the Roman Catholic Church. Founded almost 2,000 years ago, the Church has certainly had its fair share of scandals, with this list of secrets adding further fuel to the fire. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time!